be a problem for them going forward is the length against a very good and lengthy Evansville team. The tip goes towards Evansville. Humricus corrals it off of the tip from Yassine Toomey. A 2-3 zone it looks like from the Eutectics early. They played that a majority of the time in their last contest against Missouri Valley. And Gage Bobe looking to exploit that. He does. 0 for 4 from three-point land in the first game of the season. Knocks down his first shot there. And when you look at those shots that Gage Bobe had, most of them were uh, wide open and easy ones. But it was just first game jitters, right? Comes out, gets the starting job, and knocks it down from the left corner. That's how you get started. Eutectics looking to answer back. Driving in on Bobe is Braylon Rios, and there's a jump ball call. It'll stay over here, it looks like, is what the possession arrow says. And that's two straight possessions. Bobe has already implemented himself into this game, right? Knocks down the corner three from the left corner. And we talked about earlier, not only is his leadership important to this team, but he is defense as well. And right there, he caused the jump ball. And even though it's still Eutectics' ball, his defense was there. Get into the corner to Kaida. Back up the top of the key. Brady Bowers with the ball. He's one of those 14-point scores. Kaida mid-range jumper off back iron, and Toomey gets the rebound. Thomas faked it to Bob, who's still standing in that corner. He tries for the number two. That one a little long. It was a good shot right there, but that was a great defense by the Utexics to keep the, floor, the ball on one side of the floor. Ingla Gay with an air ball, just not enough on it to contest from Ben Hummerkaus, seemingly affecting that shot. Antonio Thomas seems to be run, running the one guard. See how they attack this 2-3 zone. Thomas, drive kick out to Hafner, bingo. So the problem is this, right? When you play a 2-3, it's usually against teams that can't really shoot, right? Well, so far, two of the first three shots for the Purple Aces have been knocked down three. So at some point in time, they're going to have to consider manning up. And they're an unforced turnover. Braylon Rios trying to get it to Kaida, but going out of bounds. And those two three-point shots coming off of the two best three-point shooters on this team in Cam Hafner and Gage Bobe. Bobe leading the MVC in three-point shooting last year. And Hafner, one of the leaders in the OVC last year as well. And lob time for Yassine Toomey from Ben Humrichaus. The playmaking from big to big. And that's one of the best things that Ben can do besides scoring the ball. He loves to get his teammates involved, right? Sometimes that's to uh, the detriment of the team, but it's also a good sign to where, hey, my best player on the team can assist just like that. Early scoring for Evansville, an 8 nothing run to begin the game. Not ended there. And defensive rebound lands in the hands of Thomas Hafner. Jumper no good. It was a quick release. The Eutectics trying to find any sort of rhythm offensively. They have yet to do so. Kaido driving in on Toomey, trying to get him to jump, wasn't able to, and also not able to get the hook shot in. Great job right there by Toomey. Just staying disciplined and staying down on his feet. To me, another three. Little short. Hummer Gauss just seemingly able to get that one with ease. An offensive rebound at least. Which is probably part of the reason why they don't want to play man to man. You're, you're just not the bigger team. You're not the stronger team. And, I mean, the Purple Aces right now just taking advantage of everything that the Eutectics is, are giving them. Now a 2-2-1 two, two, full court press. Eutectics do break it. Back to man to man for Evansville. Kaida at the top of the key, trying to battle Yassin Toomey. Instead, it's a ball screen. Bowers is trapped in the corner, on the ground, finally gets it to Kaida, and now a corner three is stuffed behind the bench bin Humrichaus. It was a great blitz right there by Toomey. I thought they were going to switch that play, but they were able to stay with it. A great kick out, though, but Humrichaus just wasn't having that one. 6'9", Humrichaus showing his length. Now Utectex struggling to get it in. They finally do. One second on the shot clock. And that is going to be a shot clock violation. You heard the bench from UHSP begging Bowers to at least get it up. They aren't able to. They are still scoreless through the first three and a half minutes. And that's already a few turnovers, and we're barely into this first half for the Eutectics. They're down 10-0. I talked about it, the keys of the game. You can't have, you know, those lazy turnovers, and right there you just weren't. 
A dangerous pass there. A foul is called under the basket. Hummerkraus trying to get Lob City Episode 2 in the paint, but wasn't able to. If he finished that over his defender, uh, it might have been time to go. And again, it's, n it's not even been that long into the game. And here comes a full-sized rotation. The starter's getting a nice standing ovation. How do you like that for a little poem? <laughs> but in for the game, Braylon Jackson. He gets some of his first minutes. He averaged 23 points in high school. Seku Kale as well. One of the stars now with the ball, Chuck Bailey, who was a four-star recruit, that he is going to be a big piece in the future as Joshua Hughes knocks down a mid-range jumper. That was a great play drawn up. Chuck Bailey, he's very underrated in being able to create opportunities, not just for himself, but his teammates as well. And you saw right there, Joshua Hughes had great possession right there in the mid-range and just knocked down it. Brady Bowers up and over the tall Calais as he gets the first points on the board for the Eutectics. Bailey it. off the dribble, mid-range pull-up jumper, rolls in. I just said it, he's able to create his own shot, and that's something that he loves to do, that old-school one-two pull-up dribble in the mid-range. That's his sweet spot. Inside the paint, tried to get a bounce pass inside. That was Savalia. Now back to Bowers. Ball screen, 11 seconds on the shot clock. Bowers trying to take Kalea again. That's a... Jumper from in, not Antonio Thomas, Braylon Rios. Here comes Tanner Cuff down the lane to Seku Kale. Reverse lay is good. The lead is extended to 14. That's one of Tanner Cuff's best attributes is being able to run the floor, create opportunities for his teammates and that's something that this Evansville team, it, you see it's a little bit different from the past, right? It used to be a whole lot of iso ball because they didn't have a lot of scoring options. And now you have players just like Cuff who are not able to create their own shots. They create other opportunities for their teammates as well. Just then taking his defender off the dribble for an easy layup. Savalia trying to get something going. He's the leading scorer on this team. He has 14.7 per game. Inside now is Brady Bowers. He has the first four for the Eutectics. Lead stays 14. That was a nice little English high off the glass. He saw the defender coming and put it up quickly. Chuck Batesville has really shown that they can use their length effectively against the smaller ball club. And they're able to do it on both sides of the court. You see Tanner Cuff, he's standing at 6'7", and he plays the point guard position. Right, so I mean, when, you're a, when you have a guy that's able to play, whether it's the one guard, two guard, the three, right, it's shooting free throws right now, and then you have Sekou, you have Joshua, and then you have Chuck Bailey. It, it's, I don't know what you do as a defense, right, to be able to try to defend against that and score against that. And they're athletic too, so that's just, we didn't even talk about all of that. It's, they have bodies and they have depth. The tactics at this point is trying to get points any way they can. Good defense here and pressure from the Purple Aces. That's a catch and shoot long two. That did not go. It is some substitutions on the floor for the Eutectics. Dwight Newsom with the ball now. He's guarded closely by Bailey. Try to get in the corner for a shot. Instead, a nice drive and layup from Arendale. Hang on a second. He... I thought that was a shot block by Calais, and he Euro-stepped and finished with the left hand. Okay, fella. Good move. Chuck Bailey off a ball screen. Nice move. He is so athletic when he gets down to the paint. See, there are some guys that just make it look easy, right? They make it look flawless, and Chuck Bailey's is one of those people. He's able to quick first step and blow by. You saw right there a little nice little English off the glass, and it's a great offensive player. An offensive foul there on Dwight Newsom. Excuse me, it'll be an illegal screen on R.J. Steckler. That is their third team foul of the half so far. And again, on first turnovers, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot already down 16 to this Purple Aces team who, oh my goodness. Quick off the first dribble, Bailey couldn't finish the bunny. Now Dwight Newsom on the fast break. They had numbers for a split second. Could not take advantage. Now a nice move, but not able to get it off the rim with Sean Paradise Jr. And you see right now what the Purple Aces are doing, getting on a transition. And Mr. Braylon Jackson, welcome to the Purple Aces, young fella. 
first points in a Purple Aces uniform that count. He scored a couple in the exhibition versus, I believe, Oakland City. Excuse me, never mind. That was last year's Wabash, <laughs> all men's college. Hey, congratulations to him, man. You know, when you get that first bucket going, right, that's as huge for you as a freshman. And, you know, he's part of the, the future along with Chuck Bailey. If those two can stay together, you know, develop, no telling what those two will be able to come in the future. Ten on the shot clock now for the Eutectics. Savalia trying to make something happen against Jackson inside. And there's a travel called that on R.J. Steckler, the Wentzville, Missouri native. Steckler's a big, right? He, he's a big, but he was guarded by Cuff, who I said plays the guard position, right? So, again, we go back to that length and that size that the Purple Aces have. They did, they just have to utilize to their advantage. And, again, that, that was unfair, seemingly, right? That's a big against the guard. Like, what are you doing about that? Tanner Cuff standing six foot seven. Another full squad substitution for the Aces. It's the starters back in. Hafner off a curl screen set by Toomey. High off the glass and a nice finish over Savalia. I saw the little flick right there when it came off his fingertips. He got a high off the glass over the big. And that was a great finish by Hafner. The Eutectics still seemingly nothing on offense against this very athletic Aces team. A drive and a kick that is tipped out of bounds from Humrichus. Humrichaus. Maybe trying to generate some offense with their substitutions. Kaida and Bowers both back in. Two big scores for this team. And a bit of a trip there. Able to get it back to Savalia. Savalia up and over to defenders. Rebounded by Humrichaus. Aces trying to play fast. Thomas is stopped on a dime. Humrichaus faked a deep one. You've seen Toomey drive and kick to Bobe. Looking for number two. Off back iron. Rebounded by the Eutectics. Up and stolen away from Bob. Can he get back to a, to a teammate? He cannot, but there you see the hustle and the leadership from the fifth-year senior. And that's a great job by him. If there's anything that he can do, definitely, is being able to play defense. He moves his feet. He stays disciplined. He makes sure he doesn't foul, right? You can get ticky-tack sometimes, putting your hands on the offensive player and things of that nature. He makes sure he doesn't do that. And right there, he took away the, a great fast-break opportunity for the Utetics. And now they have to play against this you know, swarming defense by the Purple Aces. England Gay giving it off to Bowers, looking like a dribble handoff offense. Toomey trying to strip it away from Rios. Rios gets it back and tried for the finger roll, wasn't able to get it, and a, another offensive rebound. Long three from Savalia, nothing but nylon. First three of the day for UHSP. And that was a great job by them just staying with it, but it was also a great defensive possession by the Purple Aces. They just weren't able to finish the... There's a turnover from Humrich Gauss off his foot. The Eutectics on that possession looking like they're going back to the man-to-man, -man, trying to hedge on screens. Ace is staying in the 2-2-1 press. Breaking it easily. And a bounce pass, an errant bounce pass from Ingl Inglage to Savali was kicked out of bounds by Toomey. And that was a good job, right, Toomey? Not, we're not going to give up easy two points, right? So he did a good job there. Just kick it out of bounds and let your defense get set. Bowers with the ball, getting a screen from Kaida. Savalia. Into the paint, Kaida again, and a foul is called. You said they need to get to the free throw line. They do so there. And that's a good job, right? If you're going to be, if you're going to, if the Purple Aces are going to switch everything, if they're going to blitz everything, you have to be able to move that ball fast, right? And they were able to do that right there, kind of being able to take advantage in the paint. And now he's at the free throw line for two. And something I'm seeing right now is the Aces trying to be aggressive as kind of hits the first one, trying to be aggressive and hedge that screen almost to the point to where the, the screener is wide open when he rolls to the basket. Maybe that's something that Utec the Eutectics can take advantage of later on into this game. However, the Purple Aces, again, I said earlier, they're rotating very fast, right? It seems like, oh, it's open, but you see a Purple Ace defender right there. A Purple Ace defender's already on the ball. A Purple Ace is replacing the guy in the corner on a wing. They're right there. They're doing a great job defensively. Hafner for three. Nothing going there. Here comes Bowers. He thought about shooting it, decided against it. 
I mean, when you got Ben Himmerkraus uh, defending you, yes, I would, I would uh, second guess that shot opportunity as well. Especially after that block he had earlier, Kaida trying to take Toomey off the dribble, wasn't able to get the unorthodox layup to go. Himmerkraus for three, nothing. Offensive rebound by Hafner. Engage Bob tries to reset the offense. Takes Ingle Gay off the dribble, and a foul will be called on Landon. Right now, UHSP shooting just 22% from the floor, 13% from three point range. Thomas got a screen from Toomey, not able to get that one to roll, and a blocking foul is called. So Thomas will be at the line. There is UHSP head coach Danny Brown. Danny Brown taking over this uh, program, and it, it's been a program that, that would love to see better days, right? It hasn't been the greatest uh, history for them, and to be able to come in right now, you're down, your, your record is 0-3, right? You're down 27-10 to to the Purple Aces, is a real good team, but you got to start center, right? In order to get to the top, you got to go through the trials. you got to go through obstacles and things of that nature, so it's going to take time, right? And that's all he needs, just time to get a squad that he can coach, right, that is ready to be coached under him, and They'll be fine, right? It's all, they'll get better. It's all about just going up. Before Brown took over this program, it was 11 straight seasons of winless basketball for the Eutectics. Since then, they have seen steady improvement. Hummerkaus. The mm. give and go Ooh. in the slam. Mm. Inside, nothing but room. And it's a great job, right? The Eutectics gave up an easy backdoor alley-oop to Yassine Toomey earlier in the game. And right there, being human crowds just staying aggressive. Hey, Yassine, let's uh, play a little two-man, right, and be able to cut. Right there, a great dunk opportunity. And oh, my goodness. <laughs> In your mouth, human crowds. Oh, my goodness, what a deep three. Savalia giving Hummerkaus a sip of water after that dunk. And Yassine Toomey with an easy bounce pass give from Antonio Thomas leading to an easy two points. Hey, trying to do a little show time. I saw that little no-look pass around the defender. That was a nice dime. Trying to have fun out there are the aces. 32-13 the lead. Swelling up to now 19. And see, this is probably what's best for the Eutectics, right? You're able to generate offense because you have the pro blazes spread out. Instead of running a pick and roll that they've been able to blitz and kill every single time, I got them a wide open three in Omaha. <laughs> Transition offense right now is working for the Purple Aces. This is looking like a track meet out here. It's seen Toomey getting down the court quickly for an easy bunny. Savalia trying to keep his hot hand alive. He has missed his last two after making his first two. Here comes Yassine Toomey, two-hand slam. Right there, that was bad miscommunication on the transition defense by the Eutectics. Inglick Clay is between the two. The second five now back in for Evansville. See how they do. They did well their first rotation. The 2-2-1 still prevalent here in this first half. Second unit also in for the Eutectics. Bowers denied the first screen, took the second. Kaida trying to find some space. Finds a teammate back in the corner. And that's something that the Utec did. Three seconds on the shot clock. Kaida has to force a shot up off the backboard and no rim. And the Utectics, I believe, shot themselves in the foot there on that possession. Your your best offense that was generated at the at earlier was having purple aces spread out, right? You had a whole lot of space. There you had the big at the top of the key. You had one of your guards trying to give you a pick and roll opportunity. That that didn't happen, right? And that's been getting shut down the entire game. So just keep the space there for if you're the Eutectics to try to get some easy buckets. Braylon Jackson, his first three-pointer as an ace falls. Five points for him now. Matching his jersey number. I bet he's looking to get over his jersey number later on in this game. Newsom got Hughes off his feet, but wasn't able to get up and over Calais. But there is a foul call, so he'll go to the free throw line. A great strong drive. When I saw the pump fake and I saw him attack, I knew, oh, he's going all the way. He did a good job just staying with it, staying aggressive, and now he's being rewarded at the free throw line. 
Newsom a 66% three-point free throw shooter, I should say. He is dangerous. Not dangerous from three-point land. 0 for 3 on the season. It's an early season, right? It just comes with it, but it's also part of just playing your role, right? That's only three three-point attempts, right? That means he's being able to score any other way, whether it's around the rim, whether it's mid-range, and you got saw right there, easy getting two easy ones at the free throw line. What a move by Cuff. Try to get it to Clay underneath, but it was swiped away. Bowers, pull-up transition, three, nylon. Hey, that was a nice high arcing shot right there. That was a little, a little rainbow-esque. A great transition offense bucket right there for you, Tectics. Cuff bullying his way down under against Arendelle. Tectics trying to play fast. This is the way they've been able to get points. Kaida travels, says the official. It'll go the other way. It's a great move right there. A nice little in and out move on his big. A little spin move to get him out of position. He just ended up walking. They are doing the right thing now, though, which is try and play fast, get out in front of the Purple Aces. See if Tanner Cuff and the Aces have anything for them on this possession. Ball screen, Braylon Jackson, mid-range, pull up, and that's seven points for him now. He's three for three. Hey, give him the ball, right? He's red hot. He's going to make sure he leaves a big imprint on this game, playing very well straight out the gate. And a nice physical drive, but no foul called when Rios got in the paint. Tanner Cuff makes his way to the cherry stripe, backs him up. Screens for Chuck Bailey. Trying to take his man off the dribble. That's a tough midi. Oh my goodness. And oh my goodness. <laughs> hey, tween, 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 tween. Let me pull up in your mouth. Oh my <laughs> goodness. The aces are balling right now. And uh -oh. here's a takeaway. Uh oh, show Bailey time. to his right. But he decides to go up with it anyway. I thought he was going to be lob time. Hey, man, listen. Hey, hey, Chuck told him, hey, lob it, lob it. I was like, oh, we're about to get a highlight tonight. But, hey, but nah, man, that was a, a great take right there by Braylon Jackson. It's his time. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, let him be able to get into a groove. And you saw the nice little mid-range by Chuck Bailey. Right now, the Purple Aces are flowing as a unit on all sides of the board, uh, on sides of the court, whether it's uh, offense, defense, right, free throw line, getting boards, getting out in transition, and being able to get back on transition as well, um, and just exploiting everything that the Eutectics have in mind. Jackson missed the first one. We'll see if he can make the second. He does. So that's eight points now for Braylon Jackson in a 46-18 to 18 Purple Aces lead. A 7-0 run in the last 60 seconds for Evansville. Have the space. Have the space. Make space for your guards to work. Make space for those open three, uh, three corners to work. Kaida trying to get against Calais, and Calais puts it right back in his mouth. Lob time for Tanner oh. Cuff. He missed it. Calais offensive board. They're going to back it out. Whistle is blown. Some confusion on the floor and in the stand. The shot clock is going to be reset to 16 seconds. Ball will be at the baseline. They give it to Kalei. Kaida not really guarding him closely. Back to Chuck Bailey, mid-range, top of the key. It was short. An offensive rebound for Evansville. Braylon Jackson off the dribble against Savalia. The floater is long. That was a great job by the Eutectus to force him into a, a tough shot right there. And great shot fake by Savalia. Try to get his third, but the rebound going right to Brady Bowers, who floated one up and in. Here comes Chuck Bailey. Whew. The nice little finger roll. Hey, he, uh -huh. <laughs> that boy's head was at the rim. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Here we go. Do they give Cuff another opportunity for a slam? They do. He didn't miss that one. So we've got a Toomey dunk. We have a Human Krause dunk. We have a Cuff dunk. Right now the Purple Ace is doing whatever they want at the rim. I want to see the four-star Chuck Bailey get one. 
We'll see if he does. Ingla Gay blocked at the rim by Hughes. The length coming into play a lot in the paint so far. Braylon Jackson on his way. Gives it up to Cuff. That was just unfair. It didn't even look like Hughes jumped on that one. Chuck Bailey tried for a three, missed it. Rebound Ingla Gay. Up to Savalia, pull up transition. Jumper is short. Gets his own rebound. Goes physically into the chest of Joshua Hughes, but didn't get the call. So Savalia earlier hit two in a row. Since then, he's two for seven. And he's going to shoot it, right? Especially if you leave him that wide open, he's going to pull it. Braylon Jackson tried to get a little fancy with a step back move. Surprised he didn't instantly grow a beard and look like James Harden. <laughs> Here comes Savalia for three, nothing but net. Had success in the past five national championships, but in recent memory haven't been as great. Trying to right those wrongs. Hummer Kaus, nice drive and an easy two points off the hop step. It was a great drive right there by Human Kraus. I'm not even going to lie. I wanted to see him go all over top and, uh, you know, put him on a little poster. But that's just my selfishness right there speaking. But it was a great basketball decision right there by Human Kraus to go over the hot step. He was patient, let the defense get out of the way, and got it easy too. Arthur, I feel like you have a bit of a soft spot for the dunk. I, I do. I do. It's uh, <laughs> definitely one of my favorite plays. Uh, my father, 6'6". Six, six. Uh, highlight reel when he was back in high school. So, yes, I have heard the stories of the bodies that he caught. So whenever I'm able to see a nice little poster, uh, yes, I love it. Hafner trying to find space off a ball screen. Here comes Gage Bope. Surprised he didn't shoot it. Gives it off to Hummerkaus who buries it. Gage Bope knew it all the way. And that's exactly why he didn't shoot it because he knew Mr. 1-3 and the left key was going to cash that in off of his assist. Hummerkaus one for two from three-point land. Four of five overall. He has nine points. Bowers trying to take Bobe off the dribble. Savalia guarded closely by Toomey up and floating it. Wasn't able to get it to go. Here comes Bowers for three. Gets it. Mm. Brady Bowers a nice release. Another rainbow Oregon shot right there. I mean, those always look very pure and beautiful, right? You have Dirk Nowitzki, uh, who was the master at that, being able to just get a nice rainbow-looking shot that looked green every single time, and it was green every <laughs> single time. You know, believe it or not, I had a bit of a rainbow arcing shot back in my day, the high school playing days. Oh, I thought you were talking about when he was back in, like, kindergarten or something. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Antonio Thomas makes the first one. I'm saying in high school. I was a JV monster. What can I say? Oh, okay. I was about to say, what defense was you playing? <laughs> Antonio Thomas makes both 57 26 the lead trying to it's now up in over 30 at 31 Just over 60 seconds to play in the half UHSP looking for anything In the form of offense Brady Bowers trying to kick it out to the corner. No shot taken Top of the key shot taken. It's off right now the purple Blazers are doing a very good job at taking away any screen and roll opportunities by the Utectics in an easy lay-in for Antonio Thomas. Good job getting his defender behind him. Toomey, his big, sealed his defender off, and it was an easy lay-in for two points. And now the lead is extended to 33. Steckler with it at the top of the key, guarded closely by Bobe, gets it off to Savalia. Bowers, there's that high-arcing shot again, and again, it's nothing but net. Hey, over the, the long stretch hands of Toomey. I thought he was going to get there. My goodness. Bowers leading all scorers on both teams. He has 15, three of four from three-point land. You seen Toomey off the dribble. Gets it taken away. Fadeaway jumper, Thomas Michael Jordan-esque. Who do you think you are? Kobe, hold that follow through. Hold it, man. Offensive rebound wise of the season. Just about ready for the second 20 minutes and they are going. Antonio Thomas with the ball. Handling it as the one guard. Hummer Kaus guarded closely. Handing it off to Hafner. He stops on a diamond, pulls up for three, and gets it to fall easily. Hey, a little one dribble, let me hop step, pull up three in your face. <laughs> That's one heck of a way to come out of the half. A great shot right there by Cam Hafner, whose father has uh, his jersey right now in the rafters, Mr. Scott Hafner who gave uh, his opponent back in the day 65 points. Scott Hafner, University of Evansville Hall of Famer. Hummer Kaus with the defensive rebound. 
He's going down the floor by himself. Gets a screen from Toomey, denies it. Skip pass to Gage Bobe. Tries to get a three of his own. It's going to be short. Rebounded by Antonio Thomas. You've seen Toomey. Gets a lob. Gives it off to Hummerkaus, who gets an easy two. A great awareness right now about those two being able to feed off each other's energy and you're seeing Toomey just keeping his eyes open and doing something that he really loves to do and that's to get his teammates involved. Ben Huma Kraus, a great cut right there for the easy two. Cross-court bounce pass is for Nod as Rios couldn't get the three to fall. How Kaito is able to get that pass off to the other corner, I do not know. And Mr. Toomey extending his range for the three, something that he doesn't do often. His first three of the night, his... Second three taken of the night, so he's one for two. Officially, that's 11 points for him. He is tied with Hummerkaus for points. Bowers trying to back down Hafner. Savalia for three. It's a little off. He knocked down two in a row. Since then, it has not been great. Just three of nine overall. Gage Bobe got his defender to come out. And Hummerkaus for three, not able to get it to fall. Eutectic's trying to find some sort of offense here. Ingla Gay with it, guarded by Toomey, passing it over to the leading scorer, Bowers. What's unfortunate is that the Eutectic's right now have a mismatch with Kaita on the, strong, on the smaller Thomas, but they weren't able to find him because, honestly, they can't see him. But Mr. Savalia get back on the board with the three-pointer. Another offensive rebound for the Eutectic's led to, a, to the Savalia three. His fourth of the game. Gage Bobe wide open and off back iron. He has not been able to shoot great from three-point land so far early in the season. You see Toomey makes up for it with an easy leg. It's a great job right there just staying with it as the pro places. If you're the two techniques, you can't give up second chance opportunities like that, and that was too easy. Kaida guarded by Toomey. Inglegay trying to get it, dribbled it off his foot, but re got it back. The UE Sing. defense has just been swarming the Eutectics, and right now the, the lanes are clogged up. They're blitzing like they just did here with Toomey. But Mr. Bowers, oh, he tried to get Toomey again on the little three-point highlight. Tried for a bomb, missed that one. Here comes Thomas aggressively in the paint. He gets fouled by Savalia. He'll take two at the line. First foul of the half is committed by the Eutectics. There you see head coach David Ragland. His, this is his first season as the University of Evansville head coach. He is the 16th head coach in Evansville history. He has an illustrious coaching career so far. He has, play, he has coached for, programs, for the programs of Butler, Utah State, Valpo, Northern Kentucky, Bowling Green, Indiana State, and Frank Phillips College. So a strong Missouri Valley connection with him, with Indiana State and Valparaiso. Thomas on the Second look, just rolling out, touched every part of the rim, but he gets his own offensive rebound. Thought about a three, decided against it, gives it to Saku Kale. And that was kept there alive. Spurs by, oh, oh my oh, goodness, oh, oh. top of that key three, Woo! bury it, young man. <laughs> oh. Get a body bag, my oh. gosh. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, you gotta hold, you gotta make that one, Mr. Bailey, and he did. He held the follow through. Oh, if you're gonna play him close like that, hey. Oh man, oh man. You gotta draw the chalk out line of that dead body <laughs> right there, ladies and gentlemen. The three is missed by Rios. We thought about highlights at the half. We get some more here, and Huge takes one off the face. And Chuck Bailey putting his man on skates, a full timeout is called 74-32 Evansville. When he's coming in, you hear the, the expression and joy that they have because they know, oh, he's, he's missed a highlight reel for sure wearing the purple Aces uniform. Chuck Bailey, 11 points, five of eight from the field, one three-point make. He was the number three player out of his class in Michigan, ranked by ESPN. Bowers guarded by Bailey. Savalia taking Calais off the dribble. Nice little floater and gets it up and in. He can play. He is one of a couple of players on this Eutectic team who are really good scorers. And it was a great drive right there against the taller defenders. And, oh, too easy. See, here, here's the thing about being able to defend bigs, right? And we're not going to. 
Ooh, Savalia. Never mind. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Coming down. I'm trying to make a point here. Savalia said, I want to score again. Hey, over the longer defender. But, I mean, on the previous at Purple Aces possession, the defense did a really good job right there. Just sealing off the big right. But Soleil being able to get two easy buckets in a row. And that's four straight points right there by Calais. Chuck Bailey with the assist. And Purple Aces, again, getting anything that they want. Another three for the Eutectics is off. But Bailey with the rebound. He's going to try and take it by himself. Never mind. Gives it to Cup. And Calais again. That's six straight for him. Hey, we're seeing a little showtime right now. Mr. Chuck Bailey, get it down the floor. You got Mr. Cuff coming on his left. And then Cuff with the fake little layup and a handoff to Calais. He's got six straight points right now. They're really feeding that big man. Seku Calais only played just over two minutes in the first game. That shot by Bowers is short. Today, Seku Kale has gotten a lot of minutes. Uh -oh. Chuck Bailey inside and nothing off the rim, but he is fouled by number 21. That is R.J. Steckler. A great drive right there by Chuck Bailey. Again, Mr. I have no fear. He loves the slash. He loves the mid-range. He loves to create his own shot. Right now he's at the charity strike for two. He has 11 points on five of eight shooting. This will be his first two attempts at the free throw line tonight. Yasin Toomey leads all scores with 13. Chuck Bailey trying to be up there with him. He makes the first. Chuck Bailey the third, really coming in as a freshman. He visited last season here to the Ford Center, decided to make this place his college basketball home for the foreseeable future, and he is really showing Aces fans a lot of positive play so far through the first game and a half of this season. And I'm extremely proud of him. He plays very exceptional. Um, he's very smart, right? We already know he's very athletic. He's shown it a few times in this game. He showed it a few times last game against Miami of Ohio. Um, and to be able to be a freshman and come off the bench and play the way that he has, right? He's showing his IQ. He's showing how much he can manipulate the defense uh, to his strengths and not only just to his strengths but his team strength as well. He's a, a dynamic defender, um, does a very good job uh, moving his feet, Right, being disciplined, and Mr. Braylon Jackson, that's another one, another freshman that the Purple Aces want to see grow and develop again. And Mr. Four and Five stay here, develop together, get that continuity, and become a dynamic duo. We might see, may dare I say, Juwan Newton and Shamara Givens 2.0 for the future. Hey, I, I may be guessing it. I may be guessing a little bit, and they just freshmen. But hey, Jamar, Juwan Newton. Shamara Givens were great playmakers and great scorers wearing Purple Aces uniforms. And those are same things and qualities that Braylon Jackson and Chuck Bailey III have as well. Joshua Hughes picking up that foul there. Braylon Rios at the line, makes the first. Rios, that is his first points. Other than that, he is 0 for 7 from the field, 0 of 5 from beyond the arc. Tries to get the second one, and it's off front rim. Rebound Hughes, here comes Chuck Bailey, guarded by... Kate, nice little high arcing floater, trying to rebound it is Jackson, but it's swatted out of bounds and a eutectic ball. Chuck Bailey really showing his athleticism so far. And right now the Purple Aces, even though they're up by a very, very, very big margin, they're still going out in transition, wanting to continue to run the points up on this team. And this is what these type of wins do right here for you. Possibly you slam confidence. time. Mr. Calais dribbling the ball a little bit, trying to be a little big guard out there. But now nah, back to Chuck Bailey uh, and just his Pro Blazers team. One of the things that when you're able to, you know, get W's like this, it gives you confidence as a team, right? And even though, you know, people may look at UH, SAP and be like, oh, they're not big competition. They're not things of that nature. Still, uh, as Sekou Calais gets the, the very, very awkward um, – Free throw. Who, who also does that routine? He plays for the uh, San Antonio Spurs. Sakan, right? I'm Number not sure. I'm not sure, but two one-handed free throws. Bit of confusion from the crowd. Braylon Jackson showing his athleticism going up and off the glass. 86 to 38, the lead for U of E. It's just looking too easy right now for the Pearl Places and U Tactics. Still staying with this pick and Joshua Hughes. My goodness, get it out of here. Two-handed stuff for Hughes. Here comes Cuff down the other side of the court. A couple of dribble moves and makes it look way too easily against the 6'4 Braylon Rios from San Angelo, Texas. 
And right now, the Purple Aces are showing their length. Again, you saw Mr. Cuff just going right over his smaller defender, acting like he didn't even see him, right? He probably didn't. Kaida into the paint, and it's deflected out of bounds. A bunch of new faces coming in for the University of Evansville, some that really haven't seen the floor as much. It's a great drive right there, but an even better block by Mr. Joshua Hughes, and you hear the Purple Aces crowd showing love to their players coming out and showing a lot of love to the players coming in. You have Cameron Grail Housen, you have Michael Day, you have Tyler Myers, you have Weston Eigner being able to get their very first minutes of the season. Let's see what they can do in the last 12, 25 of this game. Kaida for three, no good, and deflected out. It'll stay down here. Never mind. They're going to give it to the Purple Aces. Tyler Myers handling the point guard duties. He has a special place in Indiana high school basketball history. Sixth all time in high school points. Played at Evansville Day School. Here comes Braylon Jackson high off the glass. And he is really showing his athleticism well tonight. Not only showed he athleticism right there, but he also showed great patience right there. A little slow one-two hop step. A nice little left-hand finish over the taller Kaida. Here comes Egner down the floor, blocked by Rios. Back up again and gets it over two defenders. Egner not giving up. Great job right there by getting his own rebound and just staying with it. Sometimes people just give up, but now you just stay with and put her back up there. High arc and shot over the two defenders in. What a run right now by the Purple Aces. Bowers coming in and stopping that run. That is point number 17 for him. He is tied with Savalia for the all the all game lead. Both of them with 17 points. Tyler Myers to the cup. Mid-range jumper, no good. Rebound, rebound Gelhausen. He doesn't even hit the rim. Another offensive rebound, but my a mark for the Evansboro Purple Aces and make them comfortable for their team environment. And that's free throws. Right now they're shooting 9 of 14. That's 64.3%. So if you're the Purple Aces, you need to look at trying to be able to get to the line a lot and get some easy uh, points from the charity stripe. And right there, a little trip up, an offensive foul by the Eutectics. And the, the, the screener had both play Purple Aces defenders sealed off. Braylon Jackson handling the ball. He leads the Aces in scoring. He has 14. He double dribbles there. So University of Health Sciences and Pharmacy will have possession. Brady Bowers handling it. Bowers with 17 on 7 of 11 shooting. He has been the most efficient player on this team so far for UHSP. And a foul is called on Tyler Myers. Myers with his first official stat in the scorebook. And that is a personal foul. And it's a good job right there. He was defending them pretty well. But he was defending them almost too well. Rios trying to back down. Igner wasn't able to. Gelhausen on the break. Can he get points? He cannot. Rebound fought for. Ends up in the hands of the Eutectics. Bowers and UHSP want to roll. Gets to the cherry to strike. Backs it out. Rios looking for his first three of the day is off. And again, both teams just pushing the ball right now. Braylon Jackson says, no, let's go ahead and get some offense flowing. Myers for three, in and out. Gilhausen offensive rebound in the putback. Great job coming from the corner and being able to just get an easy putback deuce. No one box him now. Nobody even saw him. It's a great job right there by the Purple Aces. England Gay looking for something. Tries to take Jackson off the dribble, up and off the glass. No good. Rebound by the smallest player on the court. That's Tyler Myers going all the way to the cup. He's 0 for 3, rebound for Bowers. And right now we're just running up and down the court nonstop, it feels like. And you said it a few minutes ago that Myers, he, he's going to be looking for his shot, right? And that's something that he loves to do. He's able to score the ball at will. Jackson trying to move his trajectory down the floor. Saw Kaida just a little too late on that charge. But as you were saying, yes, Tyler Myers definitely 
looking to score. I didn't get to finish the little nugget I had on him early, so I'll finish it now. Why not? 2,800 and let me see here. 2,000. 837 points. I finally found it here on my sheet. That was sixth all-time in Indiana high school basketball history. He played at Evansville Day School. Kaida guarded by Day. And blocked by Day. A little bit of arm there, but the referee decided not to call it. Myers down the floor. Nice bounce pass into Gelhausen. Day tried the putback. was a little too early. There's a great little dime right there and fine by Myers. I don't know how he's able to get it through the defense. And a great strong drive right there by Paradise to get them to the free throw line. Right, this is something that I talked about. You take this one to be able to get on the board. You got to be able to get to the free throw line. Right, and that was a nice strong drive and transition offense. And you know, he was uh, cornered by the paint by three Purple Ace defenders. Michael Day came down and tried to get a block, but he ended up getting a whole lot of body also couple of new faces coming in. Seku Kale, who has already played a bunch today, as well as Dakota Candler. He is getting his first minutes of the year as well. He is from Vincennes, the 6'5 freshman forward. Second free throw is up, and it's good for Paradise Junior. So 92 to 41 now, the score. Myers handing it off. Egner with the mid-range jumper is off. Two offensive rebounds, though. Ooh, Myers no, for no three. Look. And no good. Candler again offensive rebound. Oh, behind oh, the oh, back. Oh, and look at that pretty play. Oh, Egner with the bunny off the behind the back from number 32, Dakota Candler. Hey, man, hold on a second. Mr. Candler, welcome to the Purple Laces, big fella. First off, he gave a little dropout dime, no look to Tyler Myers, missed that, and then, oh, let me give a little no look right there to Mr. Gailhausen for an easy two. Up and touching every part of the rim, Kalei offensive board puts it up and in. Offensive rebounds didn't play a big factor for the Purple Aces in the first half, but in these final 20 minutes with these second groups coming on, it has really paid dividends for them. And they're just doing a great job of just staying with it, continuing possessions. Um, and this is something that I talked about that the U Texas just could not allow. And that was, you know, offensive rebounds, that second chance points. Mr. Myers, uh oh, what you trying to do, fella? Well, he's not going to dunk it. That man is 5'10, hey. but he puts it up. Hey, I saw a few dunk attempts <laughs> in the, uh, in the in, in pre games. They weren't clean, but they still went in. Again, trying to find a shot of Savalia. Now, Dwight Newsom. Looking for his first three of the season. It's no good. He is now 0 for 4 on the young season. Egner slowing it down just a little bit. We have been nonstop up and down for the past couple of minutes. And taken away by Paradise Jr. He will just lay it up. Doesn't even go for the dunk. To Mr. Weston Einer. Hold on a second. Like, come on now, man. Like, what do you do? What do you do? I don't know. There he is. Candler with the put back off the... Tyler Myers miss, under seven minutes to play here in the second half. Candler, a rebound and assist, and now two points. That long three is missed short. Dwight Newsom with the rebound. The Eutectics were out-rebounded very badly in their last game, and right now they are out-rebounded again very badly, 53-24. to 24. On average, they lose the rebound battle by about 15.3 rebounds per game. A offensive foul is called, and a timeout is taken here at the Ford Center in Evansville, Indiana, 102 to 43. UE on top of the UHSP Eutectics. The final 6:27 to play. Newest member of the McMahon exterminating family, Raven our official bed bug sniffing expert. With McMahon skilled technicians and advanced training, we will get rid of the bed bugs. And Raven's keen senses will make sure we don't miss a single bug. Call us today and remember, who can help with all your pest control needs, including bed bugs? McMahon's canine Raven can. The valley runs deep. We 
help all Americans. We have champions. We have Olympians. We have legends. And the valley just got deeper. And what if I need a different kind of plan? State Farm can help you find the right coverage. What if I was a different kind of baller? It's called Mark's Cubans. Cuban sandwiches by Mark Cuban. You'd have a majority steak. Mm. This is proprietary toasting technology. It's a pass. Okay, hear me out. Mark Cubans. Tube socks by yours truly. Nope. Mm -mm. At State Farm, we're there for your what ifs. Get a quote today. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Back here at the Ford Center, Evansville, 102 UHSP 43. This game has not been tied, and the lead has stayed the same the entire way. 6.27 to play in this one. Evansville trying to stay dominant. They have been led in scoring by pretty much everybody, a bunch of players in double digits, but in total, Braylon Jackson leading this team 14 points, 6 of 8 from the field. And then for the Eutectics, two players with 17, those being Savalia and Brady Bowers. Both those players had the green light for the Eutectics, right? Um, just being able to generate whatever kind of offense that was given to them, especially at the three-point line. And the Purple Ace is just, just a team effort right now, everyone being able to score at will, whether it's all second chance buckets, whether it's uh, generating their own opportunities or opportunities from their teammates. Um, so a, a great great uh, effort by the Purple Aces on their home stand tonight. And though it hasn't really been close, has been an entertaining one, highlight filled, you could say. Newsom to the top of the key for three and missed. That was Steckler. Myers with it. Eigner now off a ball screen. Day rolling. And it's tipped out by Arendale. Great anticipation right there by the defense to be able to tip it out. But right now, if you're the Purple Aces, you still have 18 seconds on the on the shot clock to be able to generate and get a good look. Michael Day in the paint. He's going to try and back down his defender. I thought he was going to go for a dunk, but decided to just lay it up. That's uh, a big boy, Michael Day. He's 6'11". That was mean and nice at the exact same time. It was mean, the fact that he backed him down like that, and it was nice that he decided not to dunk. And, oh, my goodness, what a what a block from behind. Off the backboard, here comes Tyler Myers, his first points in a Purple Aces uniform. Finally fall, a little bit of elation on his face. And we he said he's looking to score, and he sure did. A nice little Euro step around the defender. The defender was still there, though, but he just went over him, and a nice little two points for him. Newsom behind the back. Justin Patton in the corner, nothing but air. Eigner now. Candler could have back cut, decided not to. Now Day with it. He takes it and a walk. He got a little greedy right there trying to make a little play. He just ended up walking and keeping it, not able to keep his pivot foot down, but right now you take this, you still have to respect the fight that they're playing with Raya being down such a large margin. Not giving up for sure. Still want to play hard for the culture of the program. Giving in now to Steckler. Tries to find Newsom, And that one's going to be off. Rebound Gelhausen. Tyler Myers trying to get it into Michael Day against the smaller Steckler. And a foul is called on Day's way up. He'll take two at the line. It's just... It's a, it's a wild sight to see when you just see the, the length and the height difference, right? And, I mean, Michael Day staying 6'11", Steckler. I mean, that's hard to guard, right? You don't have any other bigs to be really able to put a body on them, right? Do you come over and double team? Maybe, I don't know, but that's going to leave some quality, you know, capable shooters out on the three-point line or something else is going to end up being open. So, you know, you're not able to defend the Purple Aces as you would want to, and you're just, you know, at a disadvantage on all cylinders. Michael Day hitting one of two. Episode point total now up to 107. Here comes Eigner to Gelhausen up and blocked at the rim, but Eigner follows it. 
and two points. Evansville bench has scored 64 points compared to UHSP's seven. Woo. That was a big part of their win against Miami, though they wasn't quite as lopsided, just 27 to 16. But overall, the bench in the two games this year has played very well for the Purple Aces. Hey, the bench coming to play right now, and that's a lot of people. Woo, a nice rainbow arcing shot right there. But the Purple Aces bench, the last two games, have really been able to come to play. Led tonight by Braylon Jackson. Chuck Bailey was helping out and pitching in a lot. So right now, just good overall team effort by the Purple Aces. The time during the season, you will need them. It doesn't matter how big. It doesn't matter how small. They will need to play a part um, in the team's success. So being able to be out here, develop the way they are, to gain continuity in front of their home crowd, um, I know those places are a very special uh, place in their hearts. And even if that part they play in the program is just practice squad. This playing in an actual game, being able to feel the environment, the physicality of Division One basketball really is going to play a big role in helping the A and B squads. Which Bo, he does the exact same thing, but those other guys, Braylon Jackson coming in pitching 17, right? Um, and that's what you need. You know, again, it's always about having that next man up mentality. It's about making sure that you just stay ready for the moment when your number is called. And so far, the, uh, the team in general has done that, whether it's scoring, whether it's rebounding, whether it's defending, whether it's, you know, assisting. Everyone is playing their role and playing their part well. Into the paint and nothing going for Paradise Junior. Rebounded. In a long pass just over the head of day, it goes out and it'll be ball for the Eutectics. Hey, man, look, Coach Rags, he doesn't look too happy about that. Listen, man, if that was assisted, right, we wouldn't be looking any other way. I'm just saying, there was another no look highlight opportunity for Candler. You know, it was just out of reach of Michael Day. It's all good. Paradise Jr. with it on the wing. Newsom now guarded by Candler. Trying to find some space. Has a mismatch with, with Day. Tries to get it past him. It's out of bounds, and it stays here with the University of Health Science and Pharmacy. And right now, that was a little bit of a not-so-smart uh, play by the Eutectus. Got to be able to generate offense, and that's by sharing the ball. You don't have anyone that's really been able to take uh, any of the Purple Ace defenders one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so just get the, everyone involved as a team. Newsom tried to be too quick for Day, but... The mid-range shot was off by just a little bit. Myers stays with the one guard handling the ball. See what offense they run. Spin move. And now Eigner for three. Just off. Rebound fought for. Gelhausen with it. Gives it to Candler who's blocked at the rim. Again a battle for the rebound. It's off the leg of Gelhausen into the way of the Eutectics. And you see there, Evansville being out-rebounding UHSP 37-9 to here in this second half. That having to do not only with physicality, but Evansville making a majority of the shots that they take at 61% overall. And not only that, even with the, uh, the huge lead that the Pro Blazers have, they're not, you know, playing comfortably. These guys, you know, they know that, hey, the minutes here are special, right? The minutes here are crucial. We want to be able to play and show the coaching staff what we can do as Mr. Candler brings the ball down the court. But, you know, they're still playing hard. They're still getting after it, uh, still trying to generate points, whether it's off a of second chance or first chance opportunities. And um, you just got to be happy right now. You got to be proud of what you're doing in this moment, and I know they are. Kelhausen now inside physical off his own rebound. He is fouled. He'll get, he'll get two more chances at the line. continuing to live at the paint right they take whatever three-point shots they that that they give them right i said that those three-point opportunities they will come they will develop but right now just continuing to pound them in the paint right use your size and your athleticism to an advantage um it's kind of like you know hall of fame uh being able to you know keep up with the rebounds right and so that's exactly what the purple aces are able to do 112 to 46 evansville it's been in the lead the entire way. I doubt they give up the lead now. Dwight Newsom trying to take Candler off the dribble. Gets it to Steckler. Back to Newsom. Patton, he's a good three-point shooter in the corner. Can't find any space to get a shot off. 
He's going to try and get inside. Now Paradise Jr. Four seconds on the shot clock. Paradise Jr. trying to get something going. And Patton just a little too much trying to get open. He should have shot that one as soon as he got it. And he had a good look, but he saw the defender coming, but it was a too little too late, right? Just split-second decisions, but that's when you have to be just aware as a team, right, and be aware as a player, like, hey, we, we don't have a whole lot of time to get a shot off. You need to shoot. And Patton, who's a good three-point shooter, I'm happy with him taking that shot overall in the season. Three of four from beyond the arc. Here's Michael Day, nice little hook shot, rebounded by Gelhausen, and he is really athletic down there in the paint. He has gotten a bunch of points off of putbacks in his limited time. And Gelhausen was already there. He was calling for the ball, but he was right there in the right position, right? He def boxed out his defender um, and is able to get the easy two. And Mr. Day, come on now, don't bring it in here. 114 points, trying to get 116. Candler again trying for the highlight play, but an and one for Michael Day. 44.4 on the clock. Evansville seemingly going to get win number two of this young season. Their next game is at SEMO on the 15th of November. That's at 6.30 p.m. Rebound, Eigner up and stripped away by the Eutectics. They will try and get a couple of more points. Playing physically and nothing going. 34 seconds, four, three seconds the difference between shot and game clock. And it seems Eigner is just going to wait this one out. The University of Evansville... Going to improve to 2 and 0. The Eutectics will fall to 0 and 4 on this young season. The Ford Center crowd starting to arise to their feet as they realize that this team has just won their second game of the season. It's a great team win, right? A great individual play, but a great team win overall uh, by the Purple Aces here at home. Next stop is at SEMO on the road, and this is what you need, right? A nice confidence booster. You're 2-0, right? Heading into the road.